I'm delighted to say we've got Katharina uh, to tell us all about the results of the survey that was carried out last year, where I think she um, sent questionnaires to Vice County Recorders to find out what their problem plants were. And we're now going to find out. So over to you, Katharina. Yes, thank you. Um, you Can you all hear me? Great. So I'm going to talk about impacts of non-native plants in, in vice counties. And uh, just to, to start, I would like to say this, this is not just my work. It's the work actually of a quite a large number of vice county recorders who have uh, helped to with these data. And also Kevin Walker and Ollie Pescott, as well as Olaf Bui from the Non-Native Species Secretariat, uh, have been involved in, the, in this uh, project. Yeah, I think the, the talks we heard before have already given us quite a, a good background actually to these talks because we talked because we have um, heard that the number of, of non-native species introductions are going up. And often when they are just the first records, we all as botanists get quite excited and we, we like this actually. <laughs> but then over time, uh, some of them, uh, a very small number maybe, uh, might become a, a problem and then we have heard also in, uh, about these problems. So that's why it is very important actually to know what the impacts are of these species and also to have a mechanism where we can basically report and uh, these and record these impacts maybe in a more consistent uh, manner to then prioritize uh, the management efforts we can take. And we have, uh, so just to say here, so we have uh, what I'm talking about now is also summarized in this uh, paper, which uh, for which I will share. This is freely accessible, and I will share the, the link in the uh, in the chat later, so you can all look at this yourself in, in more detail. So if you look at impacts, I think we can broadly divide. Um, plants in, in Britain into four big groups. So we have uh, the first group of plants which are uh, have well-documented impacts. So examples are Rhododendron ponticum or Japanese knotweed. For these, uh, often control and er eradication actions are taken and some of these are also banned from, from sale in the horticultural trade. Then we have species that are well documented, have well documented impacts um, mainly outside Britain and not, uh, but not so well documented in Britain, may, mainly because they are not very widespread or just starting to spread. Example here is um, the tree of heaven, Ailanthus altissima, for which already a, um, so a risk assessment exists and it has also been banned from sale. But then we have a, a very large group, I think, of, of species where we assume they have impacts or we, we know maybe from field experience, but these are not uh, documented in the same way as we uh, have done it for, for species um, like rhododendron, for example. And often uh, our impact assessment basically has the only thing we can, can look at, the only evidence is the, the distribution of these species. Example here is the... Um, uh, Lamiastrum galliotum, and this is a silver leaf uh, arch archangel. <laughs> and then we have a, uh, uh, so there, are, and often ab about these species, there isn't any management approach in, in place to do anything about them. And then we have a, a large group, a, a, a final group of species, which are species which are basically emerging and, and noticed as that, where we also have no documented impacts. But sometimes we have risk assessments because there are horizon scanning exercises in place which are conducted by the by CEH and the Non-Native Species Secretariat, which looks specifically at these newly emerging, emerging or not even present species and could prioritize these for risk assessment. But unfortunately, these horizon scanning exercise does not take into account the group three, so these species which have already a uh, wide distribution or are, are really established already. So this is basically a, a gap in, in the policy approach. So, but this increasing number of invasive uh, plants and also non-native species uh, which are introduced, uh, also the efforts have increased basically to 
to find uh, ways to assess their impacts. And uh, over the last decade, uh, there has been a standard, or several standards have actually been developed, but one has been adopted by the um, IOCN, like internationally, and that's the ICAT uh, standard, for which stands for Environmental Impact Classification for Alien Taxa. And there's also one for, for the social and economic impacts of assessment of alien taxa. But here we only use the, um, we, we only look at the one, uh, the environmental impacts. So it has five categories for, of impacts, which uh, go from minimal, basically nothing to worry about. If, and uh, I have just highlighted here about basically the key differences are between these um, these groups. So it, in, in, in massive, basically, it's an irreversible change and also the extinction of, of native species. And in 2016, the um, CH organized a, um, an assessment of invasive species in Britain. And where the ICAT methodology was applied to, to all established alien species. And so basically they, they started with a list of um, 2000 species. So this is, um, is all species, uh, all taxonomy groups. But so the final list we had to assess were 250 species of which then 122 were plants. So there was was then, so they had like 36 ecologists and we worked in five groups according to the taxonomic expertise. And we applied this ICAT um, uh, scoring system, which I just showed you, to um, also to the plants. In the plant group, you can see some familiar names here. And um, was a lot of work. So all of these 122 plants were assessed by at least three of these botanists and then there was a consensus workshop in also in 2016 where we um, then agreed uh, these the scores, the final scores. And this was the result. So we had these are the 10 plants with the highest uh, impacts in 2016. And so all so these are all major. So the, the 11th plants wasn't major anymore. So it's not that there were more than these. And this I, I think it looks very similar to the list. I think Mark. Uh, showed in his uh, talk just recent, just before the break. So after this uh, talk, I think Kevin, it was Kevin who raised the question, if a different group of people would agree with our assessment, I mean, even though we were like three people for each plant, and of people, if people with more local knowledge and field experience um, at smaller scales uh, would maybe suggest other species. So that's why we started, uh, so that basically started the idea to have an impact survey at the level of BSBI vice counties. And this was an online survey where we basically asked two main questions. First one was to name and score 10 plants with the highest current impacts in the respective vice county. And the second question was to look at the, the plant, the 10 plants we had found uh, to have the highest impacts at the level of Great Britain and score um, and also score their impacts at the vice county level. In addition, we also asked them um, to which uh, habitats were affected and to give um, a confidence score. We didn't ask about the impact mechanism, which was part of uh, the national study, but there was also an opportunity to provide, provide a comment about uh, yeah, particular impacts. Yeah, and all of this took place in um, 2019. Yeah, this is the, um, also we use the same score system as in the, in the British study. And um, then vice county recorders were asked to, to make themselves familiar with these categories. And then starting to think about first if there were plants in the, in the highest category with massive impact and then go down uh, their list of species until they had uh, named 10 species. So this way we, we got first the species categorized, but also 
uh, got a sort of ranking of the species with the species with the highest impact um, named first. We also ask then to to use um, uh, to to allocate uh, the species to but uh, any of these habitat habitat categories, and there was space uh, in a comment box to also name any native species that may have disappeared or if there were any other remarkable changes in the habitats affected. Yeah, and these were our results. So we have been very lucky. We had 86 Vice County recorders who, who uh, thankfully took the time and filled in our, our survey. They And you can see those on, on the map, basically, um, that's all the ones that are not um, in white I have participated. In total, 123 species were reported, which relate to nearly 800 observations. The map shows you the average impact scores of, of the 10 species which were um, named for the respective uh, county. So you can see already that there were quite a lot of differences so that uh, in some cases uh, a recorder would, would have 10 species with massive impacts, whereas others would uh, score most of their species with minor or moderate impacts. Yeah, look at the most frequent species. We had, um, so these are all the ones, I hope you can see that you were mentioned in more than 10, uh, 10 of the wise counties. And so the first, uh, so the list at first looks really like uh, so the, the usual um, suspects on, on the top. But then we also have uh, quite some interesting plants um, further down the list, which may have not been so well known to have really um, uh, higher impacts. And some of them have already been, been mentioned earlier. For example, here the Allium paradoxum was mentioned for Shropshire and, and uh, El Elodia canadensis and Elodia nutalii. So, that's, um, so they also appear here in our top list. If you look at the impact scores, so this is uh, the same list and you can see here Again, the number of uh, vice counties where, where they have been mentioned, but also the average um, impact score the species received in, in all the vice counties where it was in the uh, was mentioned, but also uh, the, the overall average for if we take all the vice counties together which participated. And here is quite interesting. You can see that Castula Helmsi is a species with a with the highest average score in uh, basically scoring uh, major impacts in, in, in all the um, vice counties where it was, was mentioned. And that's the highest average score any of the species received. Whereas uh, Montbrezia, Cocosmia, that's the, the lowest. Um, so it's quite frequent, but the impacts are uh, on average is um, is between um, is it major uh, is below um, moderate so between yeah and then another interesting you know, example is uh, rubus spectabilis which has also quite high average impacts where it is present yes is, so this is an example and then when you look at the whole uh, area it is um, doesn't score very high because this species is, I think, is quite a big problem already in Northern Ireland, but it's also increasingly having problems in, in Scotland. Although it might not be that widespread yet in, um, in England. Yeah, but if, so one, one of the purposes of the, uh, of the survey was, was also to see more the regional differences. And one example here is the uh, water primrose. It was only mentioned in for, from two uh, vice counties that was both rated as having massive impacts. Whereas the, um, uh, the, in the British assessment, it was only scored as having minor impacts. Although I have to say in, in the British uh, assessment, we, had, we were looking at the, the current impact, but also at the potential of the species, uh, the potential impacts if it would spread in all suitable habit habitats where it received then a major. 
Yeah, these are the uh, average, um, the impact scores for Rhododendron Ponticum. And I think this is a, this example shows basically two things. So it shows you that, um, uh, that, that Vice County recorders perception of impacts can be, can, can be quite variable. So if you look at some areas where you see that, um, for example, on the, uh, on the Irish coast or so that in, in neighboring uh, uh, vice counties, the, the impact is, is major, whereas some mothers have not even reported the, the species. So this is, could be either a result of different perceptions, but also, of course, uh, show us the differences in, in geography and habitat availability in these different um, uh, areas and, and, and variation at local levels. Looking at the overall results, we, for, for all, we can see that the um, most species or, or most uh, events were, were scored as having major or moderate uh, impacts, but there's also a high number of, of massive impacts, which, if you remember, means that there were basically the local extinction and irreversible changes in, in habitats affected by these species. And uh, overall, recorders were also quite uh, had quite quite a high confidence in in the scores they were giving, particular in the in the higher scoring um, categories. Yeah, I mean, we, we also tested for how how the distribution of of the species in individual vice counties would influence the scores, and there's a clear relationship. So the the more wider the distribution in a vice county is, the more likely is also that the uh, that the species has a higher impact. And in terms of habitat, the habitats most affected were uh, woodlands or broadleaf and mixed woodlands, and then uh, boundary and linear, linear features, which is of course quite a broad category and can include uh, very different uh, sort of habitats also. And after that, followed by, by um, aquatic freshwater, aquatic habitats. We got 39 uh, native plants, which will have been negative negatively impact, impacted, but this is for the whole of, of Britain and Ireland, but, and then we had 20 records uh, from England. And the most frequent species mentioned to having basically uh, contributed to the direct local extinction of uh, species was uh, Castula helmsi in four cases, and then um, for England and Cotoniasta integrifolius uh, in three cases in England. And finally, if you look at the number of, uh, of these 10 top species, which had been previously scored in, in, um, in 2016, you can see that um, basically there is some sort of disagreement between what uh, Vice County recorder thought and what um, uh, this, this earlier result was. But uh, so the main species, or quite a lot, are in included. So all the ones here with a, with a um, little star have also been uh, in top 10 list if we combine all the vice county recorder responses. But from our from the top list from the 2016 assessment, quite a lot of species had not been present in in uh, some of the vice counties. So you can that in this list here or uh, yeah, have not been mentioned, but others, yeah, yeah. are so are in, included in both. So. so in conclusion, we could see that the local knowledge uh, of Vice County provide uh, Vice County recorder provided a valuable additional perspective on impacts, but is also to some extent dependent on on the on the perception of the recorder and how they interpret the the, the evidence. Yeah, maybe I should say that in in the 2016 uh, CH uh, um, assessment, we, we had basically to present the evidence also, which means we had to, to check uh, in the literature and if there was any 
published evidence we could use to, to justify the scores. Yes, so, so the scoring of a recorder is always based on, uh, so they were not asked to, to look if there was anything published on this. So this is uh, based on their own field experience. And we, we also think that these sort of surveys might actually be quite a good um, method to pick up uh, impacts of species, which uh, we wouldn't pick up in by, by the method we use by, by looking at, at published evidence, because very often these things might not be published, sometimes because it um, doesn't seem interesting, because it's very similar, but not has, so it's not, not novel enough, which is often a, a problem in, in scientific publishing. But with this sort of service, we would also find out much earlier if there would be uh, could be any problems. And then, of course, we could also, this could be a way to, to identify species for which um, more detailed studies would be necessary to then get this hard evidence basically required for, for risk assessment and then possibly further uh, policy actions. And we also found that it, that, these, uh, that it was possible basically to use the, the ICAT categories and, and and this, is, I think, is of particular value because it makes our results much more comparable to, to other assessments and results uh, also at, at an international level. Yeah, and so if you want to see um, more about this and also the full data set, uh, you can download this from, uh, from this web page where the, where the article is available. And I can also um, copy or post the the link in the chat later. Yeah, and thanks again to all the Vice County recorders who helped with this and also um, all people, particular also lots of people in the BSBI who helped to distribute the survey and Tom Humphrey who helped um, yeah, making the maps and, and, and making data available. Yeah, and thanks for listening. Thank you, Katerina. That's uh, fascinating. Um, I'll start with a question. Um, did you look at the... Um, oh. did, did, did you look at the geology um, of the various counties to see whether that affected the species reported? So, for example, with us in Cambridgeshire, um, we definitely don't have a problem with rhododendron because we're mostly chalk. And I don't think the rhododendron uh, likes. I'm chalk. sorry, I can't. I I can't hear uh, Jonathan. I don't know. Is that just me or? Hello, um, Julie. Can you hear me? Ah, yes. Yeah, sorry, I, 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 I don't know if it was me who dropped out or if it was Jonathan. So you ask about the geology, wasn't it? Yes. D does the geology impact on what are the invasive species? And I suppose to an extent also does the hydrology. So in the east, um, certainly Cambridgeshire, the Renutria um, japonica doesn't really seem to get going very much. Yeah, I mean, of, of course it does, but it wasn't part of our studies. We didn't go to, to that level. So I Right, and it, it would still be possible. So the data are there, and um, yeah. Olga asks, "What habitat classification did you use for the research? Is that in the paper?" And so that was the one from. Yeah, I also I, I thought I had copied that in. That's the one from the uh, it's the joint nature conservation. So there's a list which has habitat and priority habitats, and, and that's the one we, we used. Unfortunately, it didn't have um, urban habitats, so that was a bit of a, because they were actually quite often they were mentioned, and then we 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 did so there was quite a big number of um, of species where where the respondent had chosen other, and then had a little description. So we 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 allocated quite a lot of these to uh, to urban. Because, I mean, even though we ask, um, the question was about looking at the environmental impact, but still urban habitats are often also 
very valuable habitats and we felt it was was good to to I think had we had urban and brown fields we separated them out of the other category. And I see Mark has for posting the link already. So that's and if you go in, in there, there's like a supplementary material where um where you can download all the all the data also and see all the comments as well. So for for each um uh, species or if there was a comment uh, on the impacts then you can see that and also for each uh, vice county okay that's that's really good i'll make sure that that's circulated more widely as well um what i will try and do is write up some brief notes that i've been making um for english botanical news um, but i'll float those past the speakers in advance um in case you want to write a better set of notes than, than i'm capable of doing so thank you very much, Katerina. Um, oh, yeah, maybe if I can, so it's just uh, one question I see about the cultural sector and, and because that's my, my area. So if you don't mind, I also say something about this. So there is um, the non-native species secretariat is currently working on a horticultural pathway action plan, uh, which will, yeah, involves quite a lot of, of more actions they want to take to working with the horticultural industry and and also um, the non-native species secretariat and has just published and we have also supported this a list of um, or three little booklets on gardening without invasive plants so where we have basically screened a list of plants and made sure i mean there's there's never any guarantee and and it's not basically you can't really uh, ask people only to grow native plants well, but these plants in these these booklets we have screened for making sure that they haven't established really uh, widely in in britain and also that they uh, have been present quite a long time here because that gives a sort of guarantee if they have been here quite a lo long time and have been popular also as garden plants but have not been discovered outside gardens, then this is a sort of assurance that they might be more <laughs> secure. So there's never 100% security, but um, we hope these are, is, is a good, uh, good, there are good alternatives. Yeah. And do you plan to repeat the, the survey in say 2029? That would be, so if anyone of the people who participated would have comments also on, on, on how they thought of how it was to fill in the survey we would of course very much welcome feedback if they say it was too complicated or or they have any other suggestion and so in my opinion yeah we should repeat it and i would also like to repeat maybe a similar survey where we would look at the and more economic and um, and and health and other and socio-economic impacts so like also damages to building i mean japanese not lead came quite high we were a bit surprised how high it came in um, in our survey because often uh, damage is also more outside um, so it's also in in urban areas and, and for in, in buildings and but maybe yeah butlia would be an example of a species which didn't score very high in our survey but would probably in a in a more um, uh, economic uh, survey would score much much higher because it has high impacts on on infrastructure, for example, railways and, and things like this. Yeah. Okay, a round of applause to Katrina.